outside of the PlayStation exclusive Spider-Man game and its bloated expansion pack of a follow-up, Marvel games haven't had the success or critical acclaim that their studios and Disney would have liked. Their flagship attempt, Marvel's Avengers, was perhaps one of the most disappointing games in 2020. I say this shortly after the release of Guardians of the Galaxy to stress how important it was that this game landed well, and I'm quite relieved to say that it did indeed live up to my expectations from the studio behind it, Tomb Raider and Deus Ex designers Idis Montreal. Guardians of the Galaxy is a single player experience and from the word go never seemed destined to force its players into an end game grind. Having now finished the game I'm quite happy to report that this is a strong narrative experience set in the Marvel Universe and as long as they don't start swapping out Star Lord's face for the sequel this is likely to leave a lasting and positive impression for fans. I do think it's important to note early on that this game is primarily narrative focused. The game lives and dies at the hands of its character and storytelling ability. If you're expecting something similar to the single player version Version of the Avengers game, this is not it. In many ways, the pacing and encounter density reminded me much more of God of War or the Final Fantasy VII remake. Each battle is a set piece, delivered to you at exactly the time the narrative demands it. This story takes place after the fall of Thanos, but doesn't directly tie in with either the comic book series or the movie Heroes. Instead, what we have here are unique versions of the Guardians as brought to life for this game rather than a movie tie-in. This choice really does work wonders for these characters in their development. The premise of the game begins when Peter and co get caught in a sketchy job that goes wrong and they end up having to pay off an insane amount of debt, quickly. Predictably, chaos ensues as an audacious plan to make a quick handful of units sees the team thrown through a series of events that push the Guardians to their limits. Eventually, this evolves into a plot to save the world from a brainwashing cult that threatens the whole galaxy and our heroes must live up to their ensemble title to save the world. One of the key reasons for Guardian's success in this endeavour is that these characters have the benefit of an entire universe of backstory, but don't rely on that to tell this tale. The game tackles aspects of these characters that are known to fans, but are not brought to the forefront in the movies or comics, such as Rocket's great dislike of water and Drax's relationship with his family. The game does an excellent job of taking whatever your foundational knowledge of these characters is, and then putting you where you need to be to understand and enjoy the game as it is. Without a doubt, it is held together by excellent writing and dialogue. Guardians also features excellent voice acting, with Rocket stealing the show time and time again. There's also some platforming gameplay thrown in here, and this is where most of the exposition and dialogue are utilised best. On one hand, you're searching for a way to get past an obstacle, which could be to shoot something with Star Wars elemental guns, or to have Drax or Gamora perform an action. These don't quite live up to the phrase puzzle solving, but they don't feel like they're in the game deliberately to pad it out. The balance between puzzles, story and combat works quite well, and I think this is one of the greatest aspects of the game in getting that balance right. Combat here focused primarily on Star-Lord and his blasters, with each member of the Guardians providing support. These are triggered in a similar way to swapping weapons on a weapon wheel and function like Tales of Arise's burst arts, where Star-Lord directs combat and then the target, and others are controlled by AI until called upon to deliver an important blow. The AI here is serviceable, but you will have to pick them up every so often, and if Quill dies, you will have to reload a checkpoint. Most of the game's combat feels heavily scripted, and combat encounters aren't random or chaotic. Everything seems to happen at a very specific location at specific times, and always because the game needs it to be. The pacing is very controlled and there's not a lot of opportunity to go off the beaten path and grind or do side quests. In the same manner, there's also not much in the way of side activities, and there are certainly no what I would call dedicated side quests. There's also fewer combat encounters overall than in most other games, and that's another idiosyncrasy that this shares with the aforementioned Final Fantasy remake. Combat is called an encounter for a reason, and all these feel like legitimately flat out events, rather than an opportunistic fight with a mob that could happen at any time. The focus is very much on the spectacle of these fights, and the timing and reasoning for them to occur, much more than just the distraction and break from the narrative that combat provides. That said, combat's not free of issues. The animations for the big finish combos are really hit and miss. They feel janky and jumpy in some instances, like this one here. There are certainly more examples than that, but one of the main reasons I can't get too excited about combat is that you have to play as Star Lord and that limits your playstyle to directing combat and shooting with blasters. I can't help but feel an opportunity was missed to turn this into a true party-based RPG. Instead, character development, from a gameplay perspective, feels shallow and restrictive. 
Each character has four abilities they can use, and while they all serve a purpose, you're always just shooting at targets and telling them to do cool things, rather than doing it yourself. Your playstyle is pretty much locked in, and there's no option to control Drax or Gamora and be a melee fighter, or take control of Groot or Rocket and act as combat support. I don't know if this is because the development team thought that this is Marvel's B team and there wouldn't be enough interest or prior knowledge from their players, however, for the record, even on his best day, Star-Lord hasn't got a patch on Rocket as a character, and Gamora's melee-focused playstyle feels like it would be more satisfying to pull off a big finisher. There are other concerns too. For the most part, combat feels like a means to an end, and in this case, that means getting to the next part of the well-written story, rather than combat being the main event itself. I appreciate that this is much more plot-focused than a lot of other single-player games, but it definitely feels shallow in terms of other, non-narrative character progression. In terms of graphics, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is one of the better looking games I've played. It certainly uses ray tracing to great effect and looks amazing in 4K. The vibrant colours and overall silly theme the game is going for really helps, and it has a much more impressive colour palette and environmental variety than you would get with other games. Enemy design is also solid across the board, even if you're mostly fighting humanoids that are quick glance to behave quite similarly. The key boss encounters are unique enough to provide entertainment without being farcical and that is always a good point. In terms of PC specifications, Guardians is fairly demanding if you want to run it in with everything turned on and in 4K. Uh, it has one of the better benchmark tools and I do expect Guardians benchmark to replace Shadow of the Tomb Raiders as one of the high-end checks for new build PCs. Despite this, if you do have the hardware to back it up, it runs pretty well. I got a solid 60 FPS in 4K and none of the drops occurred in combat. Instead, these tended to happen transitioning out of encounters. These were not overly frequent, but certainly noticeable. I would certainly recommend that anyone using a NVIDIA card updates their drivers before playing the game, as there was a notable performance difference on the new drivers that released when this game did. There are a few niggles within gameplay that do point out some other technical issues. I've already mentioned the animations in combat, and I think that could do with just a few touches here and there. I enjoyed sections where I'd get to control the ship, but these controls were horrific at best, and no matter how I changed the settings in the menus or whether or not I plugged in a controller, this felt stiff and unresponsive. There were also some issues within the game where pressing tab didn't bring up the menu, uh, remapping the key and restarting the game, verifying the files within Steam. None of these really seemed to help. Uh, I also noticed some serious vibrating textures when you're on a piece of geometry that moves with your character. In particular, a lot of these bugs felt minor but were still annoying right down to the issue with jumping at the end of a sliding animation. These sections could all use another pass over to smooth out some of the jank associated with this, but I'm quite confident that none of these are so serious that can't be solved quickly and quietly by the developers. And for myself at least, none of these really damage my experience playing the game. The real reason that Marvel's Guardians is a success where the Avengers game wasn't is because it remembers the number one tenant of video game design, that games are supposed to be fun. Rather than giving you a goal that feels really far off in the distance, or finding reasons to make you unnecessarily craft, grind, and gather, it just says, hey, here's a curated adventure for you to play. It gives you a reason to go on said adventure and a reason to keep going, all the while imprinting these characters into your mind and heart in the best possible way. This isn't a particularly serious game, and it does have some serious moments. It's a light-hearted romp with excellent characters, fun and serviceable combat, with an incredibly driving narrative. The game is also pretty spectacular to look at, but it does fall within what I'd expect from a AAA studio in 2021. Every facet of the game has a great synergy with the other bits that work, and the dialogue in particular is excellent. It's been a long time since I laughed while playing a video game, and Guardians of the Galaxy managed to do it a few times throughout my 20 hour playthrough. When all said and done, I could nitpick this game for days, but it's the first game in over two years that's made me laugh, and if that's not the highest praise I can give a game with focus on writing and dialogue, then I don't really know what is.